Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Cheers, George. Cheers. Oh. Different. Very refreshing. Well, this is the show where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. So everything from pop culture, current events, and money. And today is all about how to not emotionally sabotage your savings account. Exactly. So in this episode, we're going to talk about the hard numbers on soft savings, which we'll get into later in the episode. Also, the most common things that Americans blow their money on. Classic Americans. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to play a fun game calling out the most popular ways that we all tend to rationalize our spending. You know, we can give, we can like justify and like figure it out. So like, things no, this is we what we should need. be saving, but kind of just like the it. up, yeah. Okay. And it's real. But what are we sipping on, George? We are sipping on a Blackberry Paloma mocktail. Oh. So for black, the mocktail lovers out there. Blackberry Paloma mocktail. Okay. A lot of words in that. And it's beautifully adorned with fresh blackberries <laughs> by uh, producer Ibu. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into our rating, reveal the cost per glass, and drop the recipe in the show notes. So hang can on I, to the um, end of the episode. Can I drop the raspberries in like that? Drop them in it. If yeah. you so, I'll do the same. Okay. That sounds in solidarity. Great. So, savings, it's a little bit of a touchy subject. Is it? Around America. Yeah. Because some people, they struggle with saving and oh, the savings yeah. rate and everything. But here's what's crazy a 2023 survey found that nine in 10 Americans, not 89%, save on a regular basis. Were they being honest? And how much are they saving? I like, mean, that could be a dollar. It sounds we don't positive. Know. I know. But we will say this there's a new trend around Gen Z called soft savings. How do they come up with this stuff? Do they have like a, <laughs> is there a group that meets? Did, 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 did millennials have this many like terms? I don't think so. It's a lot. It's a lot to keep up with. We were busy, you know, trying to find jobs and stuff. And they're out here like, guys, um, welcome yeah, to we, the Gen Z meeting today. We we're going to talk about loud recession. budgeting. We were in the recession when we All hit the job market. All in favor of soft savings, say I. <laughs> so it's called soft savings. So again, it's the idea that you prioritize your lifestyle, you're going to enjoy life, oh. and then kind of like passively save. Like you'll throw some money in savings, but it's not this like intentional plan. It's not, it's not an aggressive savings. So you're not That's necessarily right. saving zero dollars, but it's not enough to matter all that much. That's right. George, for you, is it more tempting to burn through a stash of savings that you have, like savings is over here, and you're like, oh yeah, we'll just pull from that, or just to like spend your paycheck oh. when you get paid? I think when I see our savings account— like, I have pride. Like, we we did that. Okay. We saved up that money. So I try never to touch it mm. unless there's a true emergency. Versus what's in checking, you know, the everyday spending account, it feels a little more flexible. Do y'all have another savings account besides the emergency fund? Um, currently, no. But okay. when we're saving up for, like, a car or if it was a house down payment or something okay. like that, we would create a separate high-yield savings account. Yeah within our account yep. to save up. Because I don't like having the emergency fund that has everything in it. No, me neither. That's what I was asking. Because we have our emergency fund, and then we have another savings account under you it. buckets? Are you a bucket person? No, no, no. We just have two. So okay. emergency fund, which is not allowed to be touched. Like, I pretend like that doesn't even exist. That is a break in case of emergency level I mean, I don't situation. even put it into our mathematics of, like, our world. Because I'm like, it doesn't. it's not there. I really pretend like it's not there. And then we have another savings bucket that we'll just put some short-term savings. We're doing a pool. Like, there's some things we're going to yes. be using it. Um, and that, George, I feel like, I'm like, I, just, I can justify purchases out of that account. Oh, wow. So I find it easier For to like take money out of that. bigger purchases or like just little, like, oh, uh, no, use... bigger. Like, like, I'm trying to talk Winston into going to Disney. Oh. With all the kids. And Why I was is like, he talking into? Because he thinks it's, it's. He just doesn't like it. In it's my mind, Rachel Cruz goes home and she's like, Winston, we're going to Disney. I booked it. <laughs> you tell him how it's going to go down. I tell him. No, but he he is like, we had dinner the other night and he was like, I just need to know like what kind of Disney family are we? Are we? Like, oh. are we the kind in your head that goes like, once a year, like who are or is it we? Our quarterly Disney yeah. trip is oh, coming yeah. up. That's right. Who are we in relation to Which this place? Which resort are we staying at? And I was like, no, I want to go one more time with Charles because he's never been. I want to take the family, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll go. Uh... But anyways, I can look at our that savings account, and I'm like, yeah, we can take money from there. 
part of it. And part of it we'd budget for. But I'm like, it feels like we can use it. So it's for me— superfluous money. Yeah, for me it's it easier to used. go through savings. Interesting. All right. Personally. But yeah. we're opposite. Well, the data proves that soft savings is real. Because America's personal savings rate, as a whole, as a country, as a nation, if you will, as a commonwealth— Nope, we lost it there. We lo- it's not a commonwealth. That's Kentucky, I think. Ken Coleman would be very... Uh, <laughs> I don't think I did well in my uh, political whatever class political you learned science. that in. Yep, that's the one. <laughs> it's not really science. I feel like that was generous to call that science. Makes them feel smart. Yep. <laughs> so America's personal savings rate, which is the part of your disposable income that you set aside for savings, was 3.7% in December of 2023, compared to... over the past decade. Yeah. So we have cut it over Way down. Yep, yep. So if you make 40 grand, that's like less than 1,500 bucks. True. That's pretty weird to think about. Okay, but can I say this though? Because there's been times in our careers when it comes to personal finance that we see a negative savings rate. Like we see some terrible numbers. So is this like a more rational way of like a trend like revenge spending. Remember revenge oh, spending was, this was a post-COVID. big thing. People were like, we've been I'm going to go out and spend all my money. Regardless of what happens, we're going to travel. We're going to do all this. But now, like, I don't know. It feels more rational. It's a it's a better swing in the right direction. Soft savings, right? Well, I think this is the From younger generations spending. fighting back against this sort of, I got to wait till I'm 60 to enjoy life. Yeah. So like, I'm going to YOLO and enjoy life now. And savings can be on the back burner. Yeah, but it's happening though. That's what's like it or not, it's happening to a degree. Yeah, it's that. That's the good thing. So okay, so for you, when it comes to like the emotional temps in life, like for you to spend, what oh. emotion is it? Because I think for a lot of them, it's like I want to live in the moment, I want to enjoy, and then if I have some savings, that's great, right? It's kind of that second thought. But for you, yes. like, what's the thing that drives you to spend? There's two things. I can justify utility. So if it's something that's going to really, it's not a frivolous thing. Like buying an iPhone charger is not frivolous. But then I want like, what is the best iPhone charger? Uh, So that is tough for me because I can justify any utility purchase. Because like it's the best. You know, it's for the baby. It's for the family. It's for the house. It's not for me. And then the other side is legitimate deals where I'm like, well, this is a good deal. And I have a lot of FOMO and around that urgency of like, this time's going to run out. I'm not going to see this deal. Okay. I know that it's only Black Friday. They do this deal. So that tempts me to spend. To I'm self-aware in. with that. That's good. How about you? Um, I can spend probably when I'm bored. <laughs> oh. Is this like phone, in bed, 11 p.m., yep. just sort of mindlessly scrolling? Oh. <laughs> 7 p.m. 8. You've just watched Jeopardy. I, I, Will of Fortune's on at 6.30. Oh, the kids go down at 7.00. By the time everything's settled, the dust is cleared at 7.30, and we get in bed. Like, we go to bed. Like, you're like, jammies on, game on. 100%. Yep, yep. (laughs) Veg on the phone. Yep. And I'll, like, see something, or I'll read, but usually I'm, like, scanning something. Yeah, and if I'm just like, hmm, that's cute. Oh, I'll click that. Oh, there. And I just end up in a black hole. So you've heard the term, if you see something, say something. For you, it's if you see something... (laughs) Buy something. <laughs> it's a very different approach. But I respect it. It is true. Yep. I'm What's the last money. thing you sort of like you fell for that? Like, I'm just bored and I just was like, eh, sure. If you're going to be honest. I'll she tell checks you. her thousands of receipts from the last no, week. No, it's just my, I mean, Amazon's my go-to, honestly, right now in life. But do you like scroll Amazon? That's a weird thing No, 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 no. But usually most things that Link I to see, Amazon. that I see, I'm like, oh yeah, that's like for sure. Let's see. Hold on. Thank you for your honesty. I'm just curious. I'll, I will You're tell so you. so brave. Thank you. The courage is unbelievable. Gosh. Brene Brown would be proud for your vulnerability right now. Um. Oh, wow. You know what? This is not mine, but you'll appreciate this. Winston. This is a Winston purchase. You and Winston, more similar than you'd like to think. He just bought this. Is that a utility? Oh, that is actually a baller move right there. <laughs> this is a— uh, Read it out loud. A Wally outlet shelf wall holder, bathroom wall shelf up to 10 pounds, standard vertical duplex wall shelf organizer. It's basically— God bless Amazon. I don't even know what that is. I mean, it's the same writers from BuzzFeed articles that write these Amazon. (laughs) It's just endless. It's basically It basically holds like your little Google Home or Alexa device on top of an outlet. Yeah. That's all it is. 
Okay, mine. Okay. That's something I would buy. Here's what I got. And Here, I could justify. Here's mine. Here's mine. It was an oversized sweatshirt. It had a hood and a zipper and like a silky material sweatshirt. This was a cozy purchase. That's it was cute. A cozy... Was it an influencer affiliate link? It was. Oh, gosh. It was. It was. And I love it. So that was mine. Wow. Anyways. That's, thank you for your honesty. But usually there's, really went there. there's some emotion here. FOMO, loneliness, revenge, overwhelm, fear, yep. boredom yep. that drives us to spend. So, though, the risk with soft savings, right? Because the idea of like, we're going to just live in the moment and what we have extra, we're going to save. The risk with that is when a real emergency hits, you, do, you probably don't have enough money to cover it. And that's where people get stressed. They get freaked out. And they Sadly, put it on, buy now, pay later, or Yeah, a lot of people card. go into debt for it. Ugh. Yes. And we don't want you to feel that way. That's why the, the seven baby steps is huge, right? We want you to be in control of your money. We want you to actually have an emergency fund, like a real one, not like a soft savings, a real one. $1,000 at first, then once you're out of debt, a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months of expenses, which feels very grown up, right? It, yeah. It's more intentional and more aggressive than soft savings, but it gives such more security, George, yeah. that when something actually really does happen, a medical emergency, a job loss, you transfer to another city, like whatever it is, you have the cash. And that's what we want. Not this passive idea of like, I'll put some away if I feel like it. Yeah. Well, and we say that this emergency fund turns a crisis into an inconvenience. And that's the best emotion is like, yeah, that sucks, but eh, you kind of yawn and pay it and move on. Yeah. And re- restock the emergency fund and keep living your life. That's right. That's a much less stressful way to live versus like one little emergency throwing you into a tizzy and throwing off your financial goals. And so yeah. make savings a priority. And here's what's crazy though, is a lot of Americans are now dipping into their savings. And some of it could be lifestyle creep, some of it inflation. But 40% of Americans say they go into their savings to pay fixed bills like rent or car payment. use savings for variable expenses like groceries, 22% emergencies, uh, 22% for large purchases, 20% to pay off debt, and 11% for other expenses like shopping or a vacation. So only one of those was legitimate, which is emergencies. Like a true emergency, there's an ER visit, something really unexpected. Yep. And other than that, the rest, you really shouldn't be dipping into your emergency fund or savings account just to cover your groceries. Yes, I know. And that's where some people are. So it's either you have to up the income or you have to lower the expectations of the grocery store, right? I mean, seriously, it is it is hard because I think inflation is a real thing and people have felt that. And life is just more expensive. Like Everything's gone up. It, everything's just gone up. It has. And so you have to equate for that. And here's what sucks about it is if— what you make is not equivalent to that. You either dip into savings, which eventually will run out, or you go into debt, or you lower your lifestyle. And you have to. Like, yeah. there's a point that the math, is, it is hard going backwards, but to keep yourself out of the hole financially, there's like these adult decisions we have to make. And it's hard. It's not fun. Yeah. But Well, we've taken some calls that we co-host The Ramsey Show, where people call in with their money problems and questions, and I can't tell you how many people have been like, hey, we're living off of our emergency fund right now. And I'm like, well, how long is that going to last? I'm like, I don't know, two months. And what happens is then you run out of money and then you go into debt. Yeah. And at 500 bucks a month, that's six grand a year that you're going into the hole yep. to keep up with even your basic expenses. So do not try to live off of your savings. It's yes. unsustainable. Which some of those expenses are a six, seven, eight hundred dollar car payment. Ooh. Sometimes on two cars, right? I mean, like you look at it overall and you're just like, oh my gosh, like what are things that we can do to change this equation? And there are some things, and then there's also some sacrifices in there. But that's yes. that's what's difficult, George. So your emergency fund should be, get this, Rachel, for emergencies. Huh. Well, so there you go. here's how we define that because the Sephora sale, not quite an emergency yeah, in my book. We'll see. So there's three things to like check the box of like, this is a legitimate emergency. Is mm-hmm. it urgent? Is it unexpected? And is it necessary? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really ask yourself that before dipping into that. Yeah, that's right. And, and the other kind of savings is not tied to emergency fund, but it's more investing for the future. Yeah. And if you're always avoiding saving just to enjoy the now, then you're always going to end up dipping into your emergency fund for non-emergencies, right, to cover these things. Because That's true. we do. We end up living a lifestyle where you you just try to you, you try to keep up with the norm. It's just stressful. And it's hard. But always that's, being on the edge of your seat financially is not a fun way to live. No, we don't want that. It gets old after we a while. We don't want that. So the first problem, though, 
is the awareness. We yes. have to be aware of, okay, these are the patterns in my life. This is where I tend to overspend. This is where I tend to dip into the emergency funds when maybe there's something else on the other side I could, I could change on this side of the equation, whether it's lowering expenses, extra income, whatever it is, like to kind of figure all this out and balance it out. But that awareness, it's big. So you have to figure out, okay, am I justifying this or is it just a lie? Well, Rachel, let's play a game called Justified or Just a Lie. So we're going to read some scenarios and decide if these people are lying to themselves and sabotaging their savings or if it's a legitimate reason okay. to spend. this is fun. Okay? All right. You ready? Yep. I'm nervous. This is There's a, a lot of tension here. So if you don't like tension, tune out and go listen to something more bubbly. <laughs> so stressful. Just kidding. Please don't leave. We need you. <laughs> All right, first scenario. My mom is stuck in a bad living situation with horrible neighbors and I want to get her out. I know I'd have to drain my emergency savings to break her lease and to get her a new place, but I feel like a terrible kid if I don't. Oh, justified or just a lie? Dr. John Delone. This one's hard because she's, the daughter is using her own money to help like prop up and that, mom's and that's I know ideal life. That's and the part that bothers me here. That's where I'm like, who? There has to be a boundary there, and the mom, the mom has to be the grown up in that, right? The that's the mom's problem. It's kind of one of those things, like, oh wow, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'd ask, like, when is the lease ending? Can can we do anything about the neighbors? Can we report them to the landlord? Right. To the Other police? things you can do. Are there actual legitimate things we can try to do? To yeah. Remedy and if she this? was in a well, she says a horrible neighbors. I mean, like if it's a dangerous situation or something, right? Like yes. obviously, well, then I feel like it's the justified. police will get involved too or whatever. I don't know. Or but, I'd go, hey, landlord, like I didn't sign up for this dangerous yeah, situation. Totally. Either you do something about it or I'm breaking this lease at no cost. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Okay. So, so I think we're in between there. Yeah, that's fair. Depending on the situation. But I also don't feel like the the daughter needs to be the savior in it as yes, well. Yes, that part is worrisome. Yep. All right. I've never seen a Sephora sale like this, Rachel. (laughs) If I buy a year's worth of my favorite foundation now, I'll save $150 on makeup this year. I was going to put this money in my emergency fund, but this is too good to pass up. I'll catch up next month. Mm. Listen. Okay, I'm going to say— There's a lot of justification. I'm going to say, yeah— no, this I think is it's just a lie. It's just a lie. Yeah. Because and well, she's, I, and I'm just, she's say a lot of ye- justification emotionally. And I, yeah, and I'm going to say a year's worth of makeup is like, Mer. but if you're about to like get a month or two, I don't know, like if it's a shorter time period, I could get there faster. But a year's worth of stuff, you're just like, oh no, you have a year to figure all yeah, that that's out. That's excessive. It's $150. And I so. feel like Sephora is always running sales. And are they the best price on makeup? Uh huh. I don't know. Tell us, Bargain King. Listen, I, <laughs> I, I, I feel King. like I've seen some TikTok girlies that are like, they're going to Walgreens for some basic foundation mm. and they're crushing the game. So I think it's more about how you use the tool ah. than the product itself. There you go. Uh, ready for this? My cat's got a terrible UTI. The vet says he needs surgery to remove some bladder stones. Oh, God. The surgery will take almost all of my savings, but I don't have a choice. This one's really hard. It's a pet. It is a pet. Do we know how George feels about his pet? I know. I feel like a pet illness, I would consider an emergency, like a true emergency. Yeah. Would you dip into retirement for it? Not retirement. They didn't say retirement. But okay. <laughs> I'm just seeing how far you would go. But um, I'm going to say, like, I would dip in, if I, if I was in the situation and it was my dog, I would probably dip into savings if we truly didn't have the money. And depending on the surgery. I mean, is this $10,000 or right. is it 1000 Right, right. I would not go into debt. But when I dip into savings, I'll admit, I would. I love my dogs that much. Yep, it's good. All right, next. Next. Rachel, it's happening in 2024. I am prioritizing my health. I know if I buy workout clothes instead of wearing that oversized Greek life t-shirt from college, I'll be more (laughs) likely to go to the gym. I'm not seeing a whole lot of money in my checking account right now, but I've got some savings and should get paid in a few days. Lululemon, here I come. Mm. Justified or just a lie? Okay, I'm going to say just a lie, but but go on Amazon. <laughs> Thank you. I knew you were going. And you get like two pairs of pants, a new sports bra, two tanks, and give it a go. Give it a go. Like, I do think there is something about feeling the part. Like, <laughs> felt cute motivating. might work out. That's your What'd take. What'd you say? Felt cute might work out. 
poke you. <laughs> That's you. That's what Rachel's saying. Um, I am saying it helps with the motivation. But I would go super cheap on the first investment because it may not last. But then give yourself like a mile marker. Like, oh yeah, if I work out for six months. Oh, I'll get I'm going to go get a couple of, uh, yeah, some nicer things that'll last. Like, you know, you keep building. But go cheap at first. Okay, um, how about this? Big birthday alert. I just turned 40. Do I have a spouse, kids, house, pet, or thriving career? No. But do I have $15,000 in savings and I'm cashing out five to go to Thailand with my bestie? Oof, justified or just a lie? All right, okay, so I'm going to say- birthday trip, five grand out of savings to go on the birthday trip? Is this justified? I'm going to say that it says savings, doesn't say emergency fund. And she's living the single life. She's got, I'm going, I'm going to Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I just not, feel like. It doesn't say emergency fund. I know, but she said that she doesn't have a house. Yeah, but if you're single. Go on the trip, your, girl. Go. I do if you have the cash for it. Yeah, <laughs> but here's the thing. If you're also trying to like save for a down payment on a house and that's a really important priority for you. <laughs> well, then it's like, well, houses are so expensive. I'm just gonna have to rent forever. And then I'm gonna go spend five grand in Thailand. You gotta know your, yeah, you gotta know your uh, your goals. Also, I feel like you could do better. If you can do a Thailand trip for cheaper. Oh, you're grand. going budget different. Okay. Yeah. Now, if this was like Fiji, like an overwater bungalow situation. No, that'd be more than five grand, That's five George. grand money. George, that's like do a few, 10 grand money. Two nights. Two nights? <laughs> Spend a day, get there, 48 hours. You got to go back. You got to go back. That's it. Yeah, I wouldn't go to Thailand. I would. I no, don't you don't, not a fan. Puerto Rico. I don't know. Go somewhere closer, domestic, Florida. Oh. You know, South Beach. I don't know. Split the difference. Yeah, split the difference. I think All you right. can do a great 40th. It doesn't have to be 5,000. Okay. But I would still say, yeah, go enjoy it. If you have the money, she has the money. But if this is emergency fund versus savings. Okay, emergency fund, I don't think I would tap into my emergency fund for it. But if it was just some savings. The general savings outside of that, you mm -hmm. were out of debt and had an emergency fund plus this money, I'll give it a go. All right, last one. I have an exclusive opportunity to buy the Nike Air Jordan 4 Retro Travis Scott Mocha Friends and Family. I know they're like $25,000, mm -hmm. But these are worth every penny of my savings. They're going to appreciate in value, Rachel. I can sell them for more later. Justified or just a lie? This is a hard one to just wrap my head around. I can't believe it's $25,000 for shoes. Yes, this is a real. <laughs> I can't, I like, that doesn't even compute to me. I don't even get that. Yeah. Like a pair of Louboutins to me are like, oh my God, that's really expensive. And it's like- Well, compare it to a, grand. it's a very rare purse I don't from get, the highest end designer. Here's the deal. Here's the thing with this. This is why that's stupid to me. If you walked around with those shoes on- You're an idiot. <laughs> what do you oh, mean? Oh, you weren't going there? <laughs> wait, 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 what do you mean? <laughs> don't you wear shoes? You wouldn't well, wear that's them? that's the thing. I wouldn't wear $25,000 oh on my feet. Oh my God, that's even stupid. Okay. Say you you like frame carry, them in your house, I guess. Carry these shoes around. And nobody would know what they are. Nobody. Okay. Well, the sneakerheads would know. Point point zero four percent of people would know what these shoes are. Majority of the public, you walk down Broadway in Nashville, and you but you you pull, know Rachel, you know that no, you're wearing twenty five thousand dollars shoes. I mean, that's the, that's the thing that just pisses me off about that. I'm like. No, people like this much of the demographic knows. At least when you drive like a car. A, a car. A, yeah, people are like, oh, that's a Mercedes or a BMW. <laughs> or at least like people know what the brand Why is. Why are they all like super or redneck? Louis Vuittons and you got red bottoms. People know red bottoms. Like I'm like, like at least spend your money red on- Red bottoms? A red bottom shoes, Louis Vuittons. I'm learning a lot today. But you didn't oh, know? Wow, oh, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're going to spend the money on a designer, do it to a designer most people would know. So you at least well, get the Well, in cred. the sneaker culture, people know people, that brand. This, okay, they know. how much is the sneaker culture in America, really? <laughs> it's a very, you know, cult-like following out there. Point zero, point zero. Are you just making up stats now? <laughs> I bet. Is it bigger than I think? The sneaker culture is. is pretty big, yeah. Smart Money Happy Hour, I just need to know from you all. Like, leave a review and just say, like, we would know these shoes.
Or say, Rachel, you're right. And say, here's the most, <laughs> what is the most expensive pair of shoes that you own? Drop that in the comments. Oh, that's good. Here's uh, here's the, the takeaway. Money's not a math problem to shout out our friend Jade's latest quick read book. That's right. It's 80% behavior. It's 20% head knowledge. Okay. That's what it comes down to. So saving for the future and unexpected expenses, it's a sign of financial maturity. Yep, that's right. It's about what you do with the money. We all know we should be saving, but if you're not actually putting away that money every month and pretending like it didn't exist, you're not going to build wealth and you're you're going to always have financial stress. Yes, for sure. Yep, and don't do the soft savings. Actually be intentional with it. And like, Go yeah. hard. Yes. Hard. <laughs> hard in the paint when it comes to savings. That's right. Future you will thank you. All right, it's almost the end of the episode, and we close out every episode with guilty, guilty as charged. charged. And this is where our producer Skyler gives us a new guilty as charged question every week. And if we are guilty, we take a sip. Skyler. Okay, so today's question is: Have you ever binged watched an entire TV series in one weekend? Ooh. And what was it? Yes. Uh, was it in, over a weekend? Okay, fool me once. What is that? <gasps> the Netflix show. Fantastic. It's a great one. Six episodes. It was great. Wow. Binged it. Mm-hmm. Dark stuff. Is that a murder mystery? Yes. <laughs> I just assumed that. But her husband, who's dead, is he back? We don't know. It's crazy. It's really wow. good. How about you? Yes, I have. Uh, I've Anything that is like a 10-episode kind of series, I can binge watch in a weekend. Yep. The one I remember like binging in a weekend was Dead to Me. Oh, what's that one? I haven't seen that one. Um, it's uh, her her husband. Sounds like a murder mystery. Yeah. It, and yeah, you got mad at it. me. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Only Murders in the Building. Also binged that one. Oh, was that a good one? That Selena Gomez. I was going to go Steve Martin and Martin Short, but sure. <laughs> Mention the least memorable character in the show, Rachel. It's fine. Selena. Yeah, I think a good show is bingeable. So like you, it's tw- it's that twenty six minute episode where you can I just know. go watch another one and another one. So good, love it. All right, guilty. we're guilty. We're That's guilty. A good one, though. Who finished their drink first? I think you're closer. I'm closer. This was a blackberry Paloma mocktail. Here's what's in it: blackberries, smoked chili bitters, lime juice, grapefruit soda, and butterfly PT for color. Wow. I don't. Where do you even buy butterfly PT? Um, George, I'm gonna go strong nine and a half. Wow. I'm going to go 7 out of 10. Okay. It had a strange pickly flavor. You didn't like that part, though? It just threw me off. Okay, I liked it. I liked it. But as far as mocktails go, it's still pretty good. It's really great. So the cost breakdown, $2.82 per glass, which is, you know, pricey for a mocktail, but still a steal for as far as drinks go. And this is a fancy one. Yeah, Especially with the fresh blackberries thrown in there. So if you want the recipe, go check out the show notes and try it out this weekend. All right, it's closing time. So make sure to leave us a comment. Let us know all your thoughts on this episode. We love hearing from you guys. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss an all new episode of Smart Money Happy Hour. Hour. 